Hey, so I thought I'd do a little review about a recent movie I got from Walmart called A Killer Next Door. It is based on the family annihilator, John List. In 1971, John List waited for his family to come home from school. He murdered both of his um, young boys, his teenage daughter, he killed his wife, and he killed his mother, who was upstairs in her bedroom, via a gun. He wrote a long letter confessing to the crime to his local pastor, and he disappeared for 18 years. He got a new family. And John List is the basis for other movies such as Judgment Day, a made-for-TV movie from 1993, I think. He was the basis for an episode of Your Worst Nightmare on Investigation Discovery called Murder House. And he was also the basis for the Stepfather movies. Because, like in the Stepfather movies, John List moved to a new location. He took out all of his money, and he changed his appearance, and he latched on and got a new family. Now, for this movie, it does stick to certain facts. Um, but the twist with this movie is he gets recognized by his teenage neighbor who is in crutches and a cast from hurting her her legs and feet from like a from a dancing accident so you know right off the bat it's like a hybrid of the stepfather and the hitchcock film rear window and i thought okay they're going to go in kind of the exploitation route where they sprinkle in the facts, but they also make it a fictional movie. So it kind of irked me. You have the storyline that's kind of like a rear window slash the stepfather slash Disturbia. I thought, all right, you know, just give it a chance. It is an indie movie. It's not a big high budget movie from the same writer and director who did the Cabin 28 movie, which was similar. A mixture of facts and true crime based on the Cabin 28 Ketty murders. So I thought, okay, I can see where this is going. You also have the subplot where he gets recognized on America's Most Wanted. You even have a character who was supposed to be like John Walsh. He created the show when his son was kidnapped from a local mall and he was murdered. So he created America's Most Wanted to Catch Criminals. And how they found John List was they molded and made a special um, clay head and aged it so many years because the movie takes place in 1989 before he gets recognized. So, yeah, I can appreciate them keeping to the facts, but you also have this whole huge plot about his female neighbor watching him and whatnot, and she's she has her female friend and her own uh, hunky teen boyfriend, who comes in handy towards the end. So, yeah, if you're looking for a documentary on the John List murders, while it does get some some of the facts right, uh, this ain't it. You might want to stick to um, Judgment Day, John List, the made-for-TV murder. I'm sorry, the made-for-TV movie. Not the made-for-TV murder, Jesus Christ. Or a documentary on TV, like on 
Investigation Discovery, Your Worst Nightmare, Murder House. The episode is titled that. But I still kind of liked it, despite the fact that, you know, it kind of did the whole Disturbia and the stepfather hybrid. Uh, even my dad was watching it. He was on the computer working on some stuff. He said, oh, what movie is this? So he ended up watching like an hour of it. And he kind of poked his head in. He said, oh, did they catch the guy? And <laughs> I explained, you know, the real facts to him and how the movie ended. So, you know, he doesn't usually like these type of movies, true crime, horror. But eh, it was okay. I think I'm going to hold on to it. You just have to accept that it's not a documentary. It goes off on its own tangent, copying other movies, excuse me, and whatnot. But if you're familiar with the writer and the director of Cabin 28, then you know what to expect. Um, so yeah, it was okay. Could have been better. I kind of wish it had stayed closer to the real story. Because towards the end, it really just does its own thing and goes off the rails, as opposed to how he was um, identified and caught. But you know, you have to take a lot of the movie with a grain of salt. So that's it for now. My birthday is next Sunday. I will be 36. I bought some movies. Um, I think I'm going to wait until Halloween to watch them. I bought a couple more horror movies, so we'll see. Try to make the most of, try to make the best of it during these times. Just try to do the best, and that's it for now. If you have any recommendations or whatnot, let me know.